Okay, it's their time again. When we dial down our brains a little bit to Star Wars level, that's fine, that's fine. I'm, you know, I don't have to dial back <laughs> as far as a lot of people. But then we have to dial it back even further because it's Star Wars on Dismal Minus. And it's the first episode of Mandalorian Series 3. Let's all have a chat about it after the scroll. Bonjour. So here we are. It seems a long time. It seems a long time if you don't include Boba Fett. <laughs> Book of. Uh, here we are with Series 3 of Mandalorian, Episode 1. And I will say straight off the bat, I did enjoy this. I'm not going to mock it. <laughs> so you could, I shouldn't say that, should I? Because if you're here, if you're here to for my usual mocking of Dismal Minor Star Wars, you might not be, <laughs> you might not be satisfied, because it was a. Again, I keep forgetting to dial down. It was a decent. It was a decent enough episode of of dismal Star Wars, and that kind of doesn't really. How do you quantify that? Well, you quantify it by I really, really, really had to chill out for it. You can't. I can't say that it's like watching. Say, like you watch a soap opera, and you're not expecting anything earth shattering to happen, but you've got your tea on your lap, and you're eating it, and you just want something on, and you kind of follow it. You could you can go on all the for two weeks and come back and you still none of the characters have changed and the storylines are still going on and you haven't missed anything, but it's still there in the background and, and you still like it, it's still in your head. This is what I think the, 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 the dismal this is where I think dismal Star Wars is. Um and Mandalorian, because I did like I said, I did enjoy this episode. I mean, they had a quasi religious introduction to the wider Mandalorian religion, planet, cult, whatever you want to call it. And this little boy getting like baptised into the cult. Um, and then this big crocodile attacking. I will say the design at the end of the programme, the design for the alien that attacks them out of the water was a really good alien kind of... Um, reptilian amphibian design we had this kind of beak effect going on but at the beginning but what we got in cgi was a kind of just a big alligator um but anyway it was accomplished very well it showed us you know if you'd never watched if, if you didn't know anything about mandalore and the mandalorians you got the jetpacks you got the guns you got the uh religious aspect of it like the cultish aspect of it what they stand for, what they don't, how you indoctrinated the armour. I like the bit at the beginning with the, you know, the hand making the armour. And to save this clan of, um, this group of, of, of Mandalorians, the old thingy bob turns up. Um, Pedro turns up and <laughs> right on comedic cue, Grogu pops up out of his little his little dome, his little perspex dome. Bless him. And it did make me laugh. It did make me laugh, to be fair. The comedic timing of it was nice. The other nice thing with Grogu in his dome was when they're going through hyperspace after they've done, after they've rescued their mates, um, and then they're off again. And um, they're in hyperspace, and they see these creatures in hyperspace. Now I've been told by a very good source of Star Wars, which is my old mate Taters, that these creatures that Grogu's looking at, that I found really interesting, but he said they're called Pergils. And they come from the, you know, so it's a nod, good bit of fan service to Star Wars fans. So they're going to be involved in this storyline, he reckons. We're going to discuss it more, by the way, on the next podcast this weekend coming. And it's going to be Star Wars heavy. So, get ready for that one. I'm sure Taters is looking forward to that. In the meanwhile, I just thought it was a cool scene with these 
these kind of wispy, like, like unknown, mysterious creatures in hyperspace. And Grogu's looking at them, and you're thinking, "Oh yeah, look, this is," you know, it was just it was just cool. Then they land on Navarro, where they've been before, and you've got the old Lando and Calrissian. I know that's not who he is now, but anyway, that's who he. I don't know. Anyway, can't help it. Two little robots with his cape. Plenty of aliens. Plenty of robots all over the shop. It, and it was, to be fair, it was decent Star Wars. One thing that has been lacking with uh, a lot of the other, well, with all of the other shows, is the fact that it could be anywhere, because it's all human-based, everything's human-based. Every now and again, you'll get a prosthetic or third eye or big ears or something. Other than that, there wasn't really much of an alien um, existence going on in any of the Star Wars uh, dismal minor shows they rectified it with this series there is a pr plenty of inclusion and diversity of alien and robots <laughs> races which I, I really did like and uh, the, the the scene rebuilding IG-11 which blew him I, I thought he blew himself up in one or herself up in one of the other episodes I can't forget now what series it was that was a, a really weird scene <laughs> really weird scene where they rebuild it and he, he goes all Terminator on Grogu and there's Grogu screaming oh Lando has got a, you know not Mando Lando has got to jump in grabs him and then they take it they he, he gets smashed on the head by one of the other robots and then take it to these tiny little alien creatures and again I like I just like the way they've done that I just I, I just love to get an alien perspective on stuff and these and they and it makes sense that these aliens these tiny little aliens with with, with small hands and eye and all the rest of it would be good at robot circuitry i just like the thinking behind that i really like i really do like the the, the thinking behind that but yeah it was a proper terminator scene I mean, he's got no legs it was like the end of terminator where he's crawling after um um sarah connor and um gets his head squashed anyway the Pirates, there was a great showdown, a great shootout showdown, western scene. We have a bunch of pirates that turn up, and old Mando and Lando ain't having none of it, because it's a school now, where they've uh, gentrified, <laughs> gentrified Navarro now, and this bar where the pirates used to hang out with old Lando and all that, and it was all like a bit, a bit muggy. It's a school now, and he says, no, we can't go in there. But for some reason, these pirates are adamant. I don't know why they've just come here to cause trouble in this way and attract attention to themselves. I don't know why. But anyway, like I say, we've dialed it down. We've dialed it down. So let's just let it go. And Mando and Lando do them all in. Shoot four pirates. The lead one, they leave him alive. He has to go because Lando's he's still got it, and he's shot it out of his hands. So it's pew, pew. so there's a nice bit of pew pew, but it wasn't. But like I say, it was it was nicely done. I did enjoy it. A little bit of tension, all classic Western shootout stuff. Nevertheless, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. These are all kind of in a way they are linked, but they're not. They're kind of interlinked scenes. They're not really anything that's that is building a narrative in any kind of meaningful way but I am enjoying it on the level, I think, of which they have aimed at. Let's just leave it at that, and let's keep it positive. The pirates turn up later on. <laughs> the first one in their spaceships, as Lando and... and um, Lando. As Mando and uh, Grogu are off on another trip to another planet, and they're ambushing them. The first thing he says to one of the pirates is, a vast Mandalorian. <laughs> A vast ye. <laughs> oh, which I don't know whether that was supposed to be funny. I don't know if that was supposed to be funny. But I found it very funny. Just using just using 18th and 19th century Earth pirate language <laughs> in a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, like I said, Dial it down, dial it down, Hog. Um, and it kind of made no sense for the pirates to be ambushing Mandalorian, unless they've got a bigger agenda, unless they might be after Grogu, maybe. 
But then why did they turn up? They didn't know he was on Navarro, unless this is going to be a greater story. It didn't make sense that the pirates would go after um, uh, the Mandalorian because of the, um, of the insult that they faced on the on the bar. I thought they would have gone after Orlando, who's on the planet and who's in charge of things. If they want things to go back to how it was, and if they want their smuggling routes opened and all the rest of it, Mandalorian just let him go on his way. If anything, let him get as far away as possible because then he can't help his mate Lando out on the bar. So. That didn't make no sense, but dial it down, dial it down <laughs> again. But it, at the ending, though, it did. So as, as I'm getting a bit like, oh, why are they here, the pirates are here? It was nicely done with Mando seeing off all the ship, all the other ships skillfully. And the way that the lead pirate, who they left alive, has, has led the Mandalorian into... Um, an amb like um, a trap, an ambush. Uh, that, that was nicely done. Enjoyed it. CGI solid as well. Just those space scenes. Yeah, I'd say, I, I'm, I'm going to say it was all pretty solid. The opening scene with the big crocodile. Yeah, I can't, I can't say I was laughing at the CGI. Obviously, there are going to be moments, but overall, I'd, I'd say, I'd say, yeah. A step up, a notch up from a lot of what Disney Minus are doing across Star Wars and Marvel. It was it was decent. And perhaps they're doing a nice mix. I noticed they've done a few practical effects there as well. You know, the close-ups, they was putting explosive charges on top of the crocodile when they was using the rockets. Nice mix of practical and CGI. So perhaps that's the secret. Because it, it did it did crack along and it was decent. And anyway, so they're they're on their way to the, but he manages to escape the pirates, don't he? As quick as quick as that. I don't know why the pirates would be aware of a ship being able to just go Pew! off in space, but let's dial it down, dial it down, keep it, keep chill. Just let him escape. Let him escape. And he goes to this planet near the Mand in the Mandalore system. And it's the it's one it's the one with the headband from one of the other episodes. And they, they land and it was all, all nicely done the music was good as well where old Mandalorians telling Grogu about where they're going what they're doing you know but we we kind of did need to know that so I didn't mind it because I didn't know I didn't have a guy I was like Grogu I was going yeah. um, and he explained where we was going it was a Mandalorian castle on this planet and it's got this lone robot outside and it's all this, this massive castle and yeah it's the it's the woman with the headband who isn't a Mandalorian, but she's got the armour from one of the other episodes in series two, I think. Um, and, you know, she's just sitting here on her own. In this castle, with one lone robot outside. I don't know what she does with herself all day. Then again, it is a big place. So there was probably a lot of housework to do. Probably a lot of housework to do there. And there's only one robot. There's only so much a robot can do. The robot needs maintenance as well. So anyway, it just seems like she's on her own in the middle of nowhere in this castle with a right hump. Because all the people she was with before, they've all gone off um, as mercenaries. But old Mando has still got the dark saber, And it looks like he can unite the Mandalorians behind him. Well, as the woman said, just by, just by waving that thing about... <laughs> So anyway, he's going to wave his dark saber about, and he's going to unite the Mandalorians behind him on his mission. I reckon. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there because all I'll start doing, because I did enjoy it, and all I'll start doing is mocking it. And but I don't want to because I have dialed myself back. But in all seriousness, it is. An all right first episode. I think it worked. I think it worked as an episode. If you, in a way, it worked as an episode. It worked better if you hadn't seen series one and two and, and the and the book of Boba Fett, because this kind of sets up everything we've seen before. In a way, it can't. Or not sets up. It um, not rehashes. It just updates us with what's come before. It's almost like um an extended prologue of everything that's been, you know, nothing new happens. 
So yeah, you might be better off if you didn't if you didn't watch any of the others, and you'd be right up to date with this episode. So on that note, um, yeah, go go and have a watch. I'm not. I'm not. Listen, I never tell anyone not to watch it. Uh, what not to? Well, well, sometimes I do. No, but this one is decent. Falling on Randor. I preferred Andor because I think it was it, it was it, um, it was a more adult orientated storyline and character driven, but I but I do get it with Mandalorian. I'm not saying so. Yeah, let, let's let's say on a par. Let's say on a par with Andor. So it does look like everything crossed that Dismal are waking up, and hopefully they're on a decent ragged tip now moving forward for Star Wars. And on that note. I'll bid everyone adios.